I'm Nick Hughes, and this is Founders Live Conversations. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Founders Live Conversations. I am Nick Hughes. I am the CEO and founder of Founders Live. And uh, this is a series that we put on as, uh, as COVID hit, and we realized that we couldn't really sit in person and interview individuals. We decided to pull that online. Uh, have a great conversation with an individual and then bring in people that would want to participate and ask uh, questions uh, in part of this interview as well. So today we have Josh Berenstein. He is in Portland, Oregon. He is the owner of Zenergy Films, but also he is our city leader, uh, Founders Live Portland city leader in, in Oregon there. Uh, Josh, welcome to Founders Live Conversations. Hello. Hello, everyone. Great to and, be here. Uh, yeah, it's good to be here. Good to see you, Josh. Um, always a pleasure. And you know, for for those of you that uh, aren't as familiar, you've probably seen Josh's work. Uh, Josh uh, has um, created, and Josh and his team have created a number of videos uh, and and for projects for Founders Live, our intro video. Um, but this is kind of meta because he's also shot what we would call Founders Live Conversations. And, and those were in-person interviews. If you search Founders Live Conversations, you're gonna see his work as well. Um, so this is really great. Josh, I want you to open up by giving a bit of your background, who you are, what's your company, and then we're gonna start getting into some of that um, you know, video work and questions around why that's important for brands. Yeah, so the way we're framing it these days is Zenergy Films is uh, your full service videography partner. And, uh, and that's what we do. We do videography to the extent that we can these days. Uh, but our work uh, manifests itself in the form of film video and also animated content. So we work a lot in both of those areas. Um, we we tell stories. We love to tell true and authentic stories of people, companies, products, services. Um, it's great that we've done work for Founders Live because I could speak to that. And I could say that we took the Founders Live story two, three years ago, told it back then. Then we had to come in this year and, and rethink after COVID how that story should be told. And uh, there's that funny maybe not so funny incident of, um, you know, asking you the question during the interview back in February, I think it was, where you spoke about the good times and the bad times. And that allowed us to have content to be able to shape what is the current marketing video for Founders Live. And, and so it's about that. It's about telling those true, real stories. I mean, you couldn't come into that video and show people partying and having a great time. Sure, we want Founders Live to represent that, but that's not what the times call for. So. It's tapping into um, the story of, of a company, again, or an individual, and through interviewing and seeing what they're all about, pulling, extracting at times uh, what that story is and telling it, again, through video or, um, or animation. Yeah, I, I remember that. And I've been telling a few people that story, which was just to, just to fill in a couple gaps. Um, yeah, just, you know. Our, our traditional intro video that you would see on some of our pages, you know, Josh and Zenergy filmed that, you know, in 2017, I think. And end and, of, end of the year, yeah. Yeah, it was fall of 2017, just great video captured, incredible work there. And then um, we wanted to refresh and, and it was just the beginning of this year and, and this was before COVID hit, but you did ask me such a, a, a prescient question about you know what happens you know in the future and what happens if maybe you know the good times and the bad and I was able to it was just off the cuff answer that really talked about you know in challenging times you know what does Founders Live represent and how can we help and you were able to capture that and, and so you know I think my my first question is when you work with teams you know um, and I'm going to wrap this into you know kind of like the really the conversation around why should uh, early stage companies, no matter what stage they're in, capture video and their message. But, you know, what was it about or like, how do you when you because you sat down and actually interviewed me, how are you going about capturing that essence and the message to then wrap it into a, a video that will represent the brand? 
like how do you do that in your team because you've done both these two videos incredibly well at capturing the essence how do you how do you go about that as a producer if you will yeah yeah um i think um a couple of levels to that. I think at the core of it is the interview. Um, I think even though we shot your event first, but I know what your events, our events are all about. Um, uh, the interview portion is key to extracting that essence. And if I can get two people sitting down, um, you remember e Camion, they pitched um, yeah. way early, maybe the first, the first ever that I hosted back early in, uh, in 2018. Um, at one point, I was able to uh, sit down when we filmed their video with two of the key people and seeing their energy and their exchange and how they would interrupt each other and correct each other or laugh together. Um, it's that, that, that's the real essence. That's when, when you or they or whoever is telling their story. Um, I think what really helped in your case back in February was asking you a lot of questions. And I, I remember uh, we agreed that I would just draft the questions I would ask and I presented you like 12 or 15 of them or something. It was a long list. I said, Nick, we could trim this down if you want. And you're like, no, nah, you know, they look pretty good. I, something to that effect. You were okay with just run with it. And uh, thank goodness that question was in there because by spending the proper amount of time interviewing, you cover, you end up covering so much ground that later in post when you're constructing the story, you want that kind of volume of material that you can choose that you can choose from. So there's the interview, there's collecting all the B-roll, spending enough time at an event or at a company uh, with the people, with their environment to capture and collect information. In our business, in this industry, when you're uh, crafting these stories, the more the merrier. The more you've collected, the better. Now, that's not to say random information, random shooting, but you know, you come in as prepared as you can, as targeted as you can, and then you collect all this stuff, and then you walk away and make sense of it, really, yeah. and, and, and shape it. So, this is interesting. And so, I want to kind of take a big step back, and um, you know, you you got into this industry, which end result is a video, and it's it's using technology in uh, in those ways, but it's actually storytelling. Um, what is it about storytelling that is so powerful that that can move a brand and a, an experience of a brand into the, the the consumer market? How why how is it so powerful and why is it so important that e no matter how early a company is, they choose to tell their story in that way? Well, uh, you know, if you share your true story, you're going to move people. You're going to be emotional in some way. There's going to be emotion coming through passion, drive, all these things that are just expression. And it's going to touch people. It's going to, you're going to connect with them. They're going to feel what you're feeling if it's properly expressed, right? Um, I, I think um, everybody's got a story. Everyone has a story. Whether, and whether you're early, middle, later in your, you know, the growth of your company. Uh, especially because early it's one type of story as you're in the midst, you know, year three, year four, it's another story later on. It's another story. So you want to also keep up with that. Um, but, but here's the way I look at it. You could come in and say, look, I have a startup and we're doing this app and we have competitors and, and everybody's, you know, we're, it's just huge competition. How are we going to be any different? Well, this is actually your chance to be different because if we really dig into your story, you're gonna shine with your own voice, your own message, and you're gonna be um, differentiating yourself from everyone else by just telling your true story. Right. And, so it, and so if you don't do that, then you're like everybody else. You're gonna get, become part of the mix of that competition and not stand out. It's so true. And when I go back to uh, the first one that we shot, like that's what became very clear to me in the decision to uh, go forward and, 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 you know, you actually, you know, drove up from, from Portland. And um, when I look back to some of the most important decisions that, that I have made and then Founders Live as a company have made, that's probably in the top three, is to, to invest what we needed to, not a ton of money, but to, in, to make sure that 
we had, okay, the budget that we, like when you look at, you take a dollar and, and you then measure three years later, if not longer, how far those dollars have been taken is amazing. And, and you did a great job in your team to capture the essence of our, our events and our experience. And then, you know, we, we basically ended with, um, you know, a two minute brand video. And as you know, man, I mean, we play those at the beginning of every event. We, you know, that's on uh, a ton of the uh, posts and it's on our website. And when people go to our founderslive.com for the first time, they click that video and they're like, okay, that's the energy. And um, it's the, one of the best investments that we've made ever. And, and so I can tell you that just honestly, but more importantly, anyone that's listening or watching, th these are things that they, they will, you do it once and it's thousands of times like people or maybe more will, will it'll give back to your brand and it, and it does create the emotion that, that will move people to follow you, to be your customer. And so I just, I just loved it. I thought it was such a great experience. Um, so, um, you know, I think moving forward from, you know, just kind of coming to today, uh, we couldn't film the way we did in February now, not just for Founders Live, but what are, what are you seeing right now are the options for people and brands to use video today by respecting the regulations and social distancing and, and being basically remote? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, there, I, I hear of, um, uh, you know, filming sort of coming back a little bit with certain guidelines, but I am so wary of, you know, me by, by now and my, you know, uh, uh, um, concerns over the virus. I think people are getting out there trying things and then discovering, no, this is not a good idea. So for the time being, you know, we're, we're, you know, uh, staying safe and we recommend let's not get on set. You know, there's, there is a lot you can do offset. And there's that one piece uh, for Vista Higher Learning, uh, the publisher that I think triggered this conversation that where, where I sent you the example and I showed you uh, what I'm calling a hybrid video. And that is taking, in a way, um, th th there's, uh, there's elements along these lines in the latest Founders Live video where if, if of course you know, we had uh, animated text we had, um, you know, your footage of you and, and the crowd and on stage, people on stage at the event back in, uh, uh, in January. But we also had Zoom activity that you provided. Um, we had some stock footage of someone on their computer because we didn't have that moment and we wanted to show someone accessing founderslive.com. We showed activity um, uh, from the website. So all those elements, Okay, whether you go out and film them or not, and you don't have to film them, you can tap into a lot of great stock photography and, and, and video these days. You can assemble a video, a two minute piece, that does, does not involve any shooting and does a great job of, uh, in an eclectic way, showing a variety of elements that represent the company, the product, the service, whatever you're trying to, whatever story you're trying to tell. So. Uh, in thinking about it, the Vista is a great example, but so is the latest uh, Founders Live. It's got a lot of those elements in it. Nice. And um, I want to get to Aga's question, and then I I have a few more on you know maybe tools and, and things that to take that forward. But um, so Aga, if you want to take yourself off mute, um, she's actually over there in Poland. Just oh, so nice. you know. Yeah, so she's over there in Poland, and Very cool. um, you know, feel free to uh, you know ask your question. Yeah, thank you. Um, you know, I'm thinking about like companies like mine. There is really small. I'm the only one here, and I've got a lot of friends who are running their own small companies, and we all know how powerful video is. And the case is if you could share with some, you know, tricks and tips and maybe some tools, how we can make a nice video um, with small or like zero budget, because I know there is a lot of tools on the market, uh, but maybe we don't know them or we don't know how to use them. Uh, I think about um, not really advanced videos, but you know, something really nice we can just put on our stories on Facebook, on Instagram, just to make some, um, I know involvement or just share some nice story. 
Yeah, yeah, that's a good question. That's a good question, especially people who are just starting out or have small companies. There is zero budget, right? I mean, literally, unless you have a, a friend or you know someone. Um, and in fact, I would say that if you know someone who can give you some of their time, tap into that. Okay, and what I mean by that is that person, if they understand video, if they understand filming, uh, they can tell you how to set up your, your, your frame, your, 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 your stage, if you will, right? Help you with the background, help you with lighting a little bit, uh, check your audio. So those are things you're gonna have to worry about. Um, you know, I'm a big believer that you, that, that you should show people on camera as much as possible. These days, you can't have a crew come out or you can meet with a crew on set, then, Yes, take your phone or a nice camera if you have one, but make sure whatever you film follows those even basic guidelines. And you can find a lot of these pro tips on YouTube, you know, dig up some videos. How do I film myself um, in a way that looks good? Uh, because the last thing you want is to throw a video out there where uh, you're, you're in the dark or uh, there's, there's background noise or there's something that looks like it's sticking out of your head uh, you know, th those are those are huge problems. Um, and so so people o overwrite those basic things that videographers uh, do all the time. Right. That's what we notice. That's what we, what we do. So uh, I would say, uh, um, you know, if it's not a friend, get on YouTube. There's such a wealth of information out there, but make that investment. Uh, when it comes to editing, there's there are editing tools for beginners or for people who are you know, consumer level um, editing tools. You're gonna have to find them. I can't really tell you what those are. Um, I know at best of iMovie on the Mac, uh, you know, we, we use the professional grade tools to, to edit and animate, but you can definitely uh, find something that's very uh, uh, intuitive to use where you can cut your video um, and then throw in a logo intro, you know, a logo at the beginning uh, that you might zoom into gradually just for a little bit of excitement and then end the video with the logo and a URL or whatever. That could be a nice 30 second, you know, little piece with a, with a few things. If you know a few things, you can pull off a 30 second or one minute, minute piece like that where you're talking to the audience, right? You're, you know, sharing your story with the audience. Um, and uh, yeah, if audio is good and you throw a bit of background music, um, you know, I don't want to oversimplify this. You know, this is what we do all the time, obviously. Yeah, it but, sounds like, you know, it's very simple. To but do it's, it. like getting in the, it's like getting in the kitchen. I mean, you're going to have to take the few ingredients you have and make something. Well, you're going to pull up a video, a recipe, and, you know, I mean, it's like that early on if you're trying to do it yourself. Yeah, okay, thank you. Yeah, sure. Uh, great question, and I'll just add, I'll add some thoughts um, that... Uh, and I'm posting on here, uh, StreamYard. So we use StreamYard uh, uh, quite a bit now. And, uh, you know, we're, we're doing that obviously for the events. Josh, you know that. Uh, but I've discovered that StreamYard can be used uh, and, and it actually has a really good uh, mobile experience. What that means is you can actually, uh, let me just laying out this scenario, you can actually record having two people having a conversation like this, both of them using their mobile device and it becomes a split screen and, and it has the two people and in StreamYard actually has a bit of admin backend tools that you can kind of shift a little bit of who's predominant in the conversation. Um, just giving an idea, I, I posted the link there that uh, these tools are pretty much free, if not a small amount per month and allows you to capture the content. And then, as Josh mentioned, there's clearly post-production editing that can spice it up. Um, but without having a crew there, if you can't, or financially you can't pay them, there are tools out there that capture image, you know, yourself, and especially the devices that you have uh, that that really actually turn out pretty well. So what the where I'm going to go, Josh, is uh, what? Let's go three tips that whether they're shooting themselves or they've set it up in a room, the three tips that help improve them look better or the, the, the scene to be set in a way that, that you think is as professional as possible. So I, I guess I'll ask it this way is when you are uh, working with a client and, and you're filming them, 
what are the things that you do from lighting to establishing the angle of the camera that people that are looking to uh, work with video, they should consider when they're probably shooting themselves now? Yeah, I, I'm sure you've uh, you've seen us do a lot on set, right? I mean, you've you've been, you know, we've done a couple shoots with you and a number of them actually, and you you know that we're tinkering with the background and moving plants and and and, and deciding what's too much clutter, what's not, what's balanced. We're looking at the frame over and over again. So I would say tip number one: if you're not good, if if I walk in your house and you, you're not good with interior design, you're not the tidiest but you know someone, and we all know someone, mm -hmm. um, you know, have them look at your frame, have, have send them a, J, a, a screen grab, you know, and say, mom, you know, I, I, you're better than, than I am with, you know, setting up a, a room. How does this look? Well, you know, I think that thing on your left is, is, is getting too much of my attention, that sort of thing. So whether you or someone you know, work on that frame, work on that, you know, that look. Um, sometimes throwing a plant or turning on, on a little lamp in the background can be a nice, you know, detail. Um, you're looking for color. You're looking to declutter. The main thing is not, don't have a lot of clutter around you. Uh, so that's number one. The second is um, if you can be near natural light, uh, and I think I, I'm sensing a window next to you uh, or, or two, Nick. There's, there's some Over here? Yes, yes. Uh, that's a, a hallway and then there's a door. Okay. Uh, a window. Uh, there's a window straight ahead from me, which is giving good natural light. Yeah, I mean, you're, you're getting some good, good light. Now you don't have to have that kind of onset lighting where one, one side is more lit than the other. I mean, if you're gonna be that perfectionistic, you probably know a lot about video, but nice lighting. Like you look like you're live, you're in a, in a I mean, I like what I'm seeing there. Uh, so work on the light a little bit and you know, light, natural light will save the day. It really will. Uh, but if you're unsure, I'd watch a video or two because, you know, it's something that you can learn about. Uh, third is just make sure if you're going to sit down for 30 minutes, an hour, you don't have your kids screaming in the background. You don't have, uh, uh, you know, traffic, you know, it's not traffic-y and noisy or they're not doing construction right out your window. I mean, Things that you might be blocking out. See, we block all these things out. Don't block them out when you're going to do video production that is going to affect the viewer's experience later on. So that'll be my third one. Interesting. Yeah. Um, you know, these are things I'm sure. I mean, these are like easy for you. I mean, you're like, you think about this all the time. And, and it's, it's interesting that, you know, some people like just are not even paying attention to it. Yeah. Um, how would you suggest, um, let's say that, you know, uh, a team has, has done what you've suggested, they've compiled, uh, they've got a ton of content, um, whether it's, you know, I, I think the professional editing is probably where the, where the, um, you know, where, where the spice comes in, um, what sort of things do you, you mentioned it earlier in terms of like, you know, I think the basic stuff is you have an intro, a little, um, a little three to five second intro that has like the logo and stuff and an actual outro that's very similar. You'll see this with Founders Live uh, videos a lot. Josh and his team created that. I call their buffers or uh, I don't know. Is that what you call them? Buffers? Uh, you call them bumpers. Bumpers. Yeah. Bumpers. Yeah. Stingers, bumpers. Yeah. yeah. And, and so that really just, if it intros the video, then you have the video and then it outros it with a brand logo. That really looks really great. Um, in terms of editing, what are some other things to think about that using like the iMovie, um, you know, how, how, what, can you easily describe how to splice two together in a way that is appropriate versus like that, you know, cut, start? How do you, how do you mesh the scenes together in a way that, that works well? Well, um, I mean, I'll, I'll try to, to give you the best answer I can. I mean, it's now we're getting into, uh, you know, cooking. A lot of us cook, right? And there's, there's mm. the person who throws something in the... The art. You're talking about the yeah, art. Yeah, yeah. There's, the there's a person... Okay, here's the spectrum. Throw something in the microwave and a three Michelin star, you know, chef serving you the best meal you've ever had. Um, so... There's, um, there's a way I would say that, that it, 
because the, the technical stuff, I could tell you, hey, find the best moments, uh, make sure that, um, uh, that it flows, uh, make sure that you're, you're shaping a story. But I think for, for people, the, the big challenge is to step away and look at what they're producing and make sure that it's flowing. But I think if you're not a professional videographer or editor, run it by people. I think I've said that today several times. Take your first alpha cut, you know, I wouldn't even call it beta, just like piece together a 30 second and send it to your brother, to your cousin, you know, so it's somebody you trust who's honest with you and say, is this working? And have them dissect it. At, at 16 seconds, the camera shakes too much. What's going on there? That's distracting, you know. I mean, get feedback um, and then iterate on that, produce a beta and then, you know, and then take that to a final edit. You know, it takes some technical skills. It takes some understanding of shaping. Um, and, and again, like, like, like cooking, it's gonna take some practice and it, oftentimes it requires somebody coming over and tasting what you made <laughs> yeah. to tell you what's the problem here, right? Uh, it's interesting that you use that analogy because, you know, look, it is art. It, it's, it's, it's an art and um, it's multimedia. It's, it's uh, doing certain things, certain ways. And um, so, you know, some people have a different way to, to bring together a final result. Um, so I think that's interesting, but yeah, it sounds like one of the lessons here is, you know, look, um, you know, someone and, and find that person to at least get advice from, maybe it's a trade, right? Maybe it's like, Hey, we're working on this video project. Um, would love to bring you in on this. If you can't financially pay them, is there a way for you to trade something and help them out in some way as they help you out? So that's always a, an option as well. Right. Um, you know, but it sounds like bring, bring someone in to really put another eye on the project. Is that what you're saying? I would say, and also here's another way to look at it. Um, as you, as you put it that way is think about if you can, you know, squeeze out a little bit of budget. Maybe a way to do it is you, you, you do the shooting based on these tips. You collect the content. You, you get an account, uh, a stock account, and you, and you find some photos and video that you like. You do some screen captures. You collect all these elements, and then you find someone who can edit it into a story for you. That reduces your budget. I'm, I'm not saying, you know, you're down to 10 bucks or 20 bucks, but some sort of smaller budget where you've done all the homework, all the prep, even scripted it out and thought it through and said to an editor, like you would an accountant, here's my box of receipts, <laughs> you know, here's the stuff I've collected, um, you know, make a story out of it. And this is the vision, the idea that I have. That's a, a possible scenario where you could, uh, you know, save a few bucks because you're participating more. Right. Um you know, I know that, so Nicholas, I'm going to bring you in here, man, because um, uh, you recently uh, created your, uh, your video, which was great. I'm just curious of some of your thoughts on how you did that. How did you go about um, creating that? Did you write a storyline first? Yeah. Uh, even what did you use? I think you posted in the comments here, but, you know, uh, share your experience on that a little bit. Yeah, it was a long time coming and it was um, the the foundation for needing it was that I wanted to put out some content that was going to be kind of defining. And so someone, I, I, I had a, a friend recently asked me, so what do you, what do you do? What do you offer? What's your product? And I'm a, I'm a consultant in, in the customer experience and process improvement space. And so, I thought, oh, that's an excellent point. Nobody's got it. You know, I, I didn't have anything out there. So there was a lot of work of like, what equipment do I use? I had a lot of questions. I mean, Josh, I think your recommendation to go to YouTube and, and go to, you know, just Google. There's a lot of opinion out there and a lot of folks who do these sorts of things like podcasting and video casting and so forth that have a lot of opinions. And so there's a lot of great stuff out there. Um, and so I had to look up like, what's the best microphone I should use? What's the best video camera I should use? Um, I, all the way down to there's an app you can get, a free app that you can get for your iPhone or iPad that works as a teleprompter. And I, on, on Amazon, I bought something that, that, will, uh, that like musicians use 
to attach their iPad to their microphone stand so that they can see, you know, what they're, I don't know if they're looking at the cords or if they're just looking at what their set list is or whatever, but I, I put that on the stand that I use. Yeah, exactly. Stephanie's got one right there. Um, I use that on the stand that I use for, it's an open, it's a microphone stand that I use for the, the my video camera. And I take that downstairs in my house and I put up a, a, a green screen and everything on a wall where the lighting was just right. And Josh, you know this better than I do. Boy, green screen is awesome, but your lighting has to be perfect yep. for it to yep. actually work. So a lot of, a lot of lighting. Yeah. yeah, there's a lot of trial and error, a lot of a lot of uh, uh, colorful language as I was trying to get it figured out. Sure. And and you know, record a little bit and then go into the program and then try to do it. Um, I, I like I say, I use something for for teleprompter. I use VSDC, which is uh, what I what I put in there. Is there's a free video editing software that you can use for there's some graphic stuff. There's there's green screen capabilities in it. Um, yeah, I've got a lapel mic and all that stuff. There's yeah. There's a lot that goes into it. Happy, you know, this is Josh's show, but there's there's a lot that you can put into this. Yeah, no, you, you can do it on a professional are. level. But if well, I'll, I'll I'll put the link to to my video in 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 the thing here. But you'll see that mine is really cheesy and like the 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 key, the key isn't exactly perfect. And there's a lot of places where my hair is lost completely. And yeah, you can wear this so the green came through a little bit better, but. Uh, yeah. What I appreciate in what you're saying is that you you went deeper into it. You you have um, it sounds like a real interest for it. And if you kept doing this, you'd learn more and more and get better at it. Um, it, it 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 goes back to if if you have to have that kind of passion for this. If you don't, you're not going to delve into it. And so folks might try it, and that's fine. Give it a shot. It might click with you, but. It might not, and you might have to make that decision. Okay, how do I pull some funds together to get some help? Uh, At least 100%. initially some help. Not a full on production, but some help, right? Yeah, I, I, also... I, I it's, it's a skill now, right? And obviously yeah. Josh does this professionally, so I'm not gonna go up again. I'm not, I wouldn't try to sell this skill to anybody, but um, there's, there's an organization that I'm part of, the, the CXPA, the Customer Experience Professionals Association, and they've asked me, hey, could you make a couple videos for us? There you go. Well, hell, that's great. It's not making me any money. You know, it's a volunteer thing, but it's like, yeah, it's a, it's a little skill. It's a little thing you know how to do. Yeah, totally. Yeah. And Nicholas, just uh, um, based on what you were talking about, it's funny because I literally just pulled this out of my closet. Um, the uh, stand that you were referring to, like this is a, let me put it up against the white. So this is a mic stand that I have. This is my iPad mini. And that's that contraption that he was talking about. Um, and then I even bought a contraption to go on my table in my kitchen, which also holds my cell phone. So when I cook, I can do cooking videos as well. I think this thing cost maybe 10, 12 bucks with all the pieces. Um, and I know a bunch of people have old phones laying around somewhere. You can use your old phones as cameras, connect it to Wi-Fi, share the files. It's like there's so many... Um, resources out there to create really great content um, to start when you're first starting out. You know, you know what I want to add to the mix? Um, uh, Stephanie just made me think of something that, you know, when we shoot, when we film Nick, um, it was a two camera setup. Uh, when we were at Founders Live in Seattle back in January, it was three cameras roaming the room, taking different shots and angles. I would say to everyone, if you're going to do this, have your main camera on you, and then set up a GoPro or something else next to you. Get a profile shot that shows your environment. That is so cool for two reasons. It will add variety to your video because you're cutting between the two shots or three shots, whatever you can pull off. Uh, but also you can cut around, you can edit around problems and mistakes because when you trip up, you can go from one camera, cut to the other and make it flow that way, if that makes sense. Uh, so many benefits to running multiple cameras and it really takes your video, your production to the next level because we're used to seeing someone right in front of their phone or whatever, or their laptop, this will make you stand up. Oh, that's, yeah. Yeah, that's great. Go ahead, Nicholas. Yeah. And also like Josh's thoughts on this, I was talking with a, with, with a, uh, a business associate recently about how everything is going, everything has gone video. And so now soon, things that were live 
when whenever they come back again are going to be they're going to have to be video as well so josh if 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 you're used to, and I'm, I'm thinking of this because founders live does these events and they're at they're in on streaming now and then soon we're going to go back someday we're going to go back to live events and those the expectations for a, an engagement online are going to be different than they were before whereas before you'd have a thing you're like throw up a you know throw up your ipad onto a stand and and just record it from the back of the room these days we're so used to being able to see each other and interact with each other in dynamic ways for streaming events now if you've seen like the founders live events now there's on YouTube and it's really awesome and everybody's like face 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 the old way isn't going to work anymore so Josh I wonder if you have insights or thoughts into what is coming up when the world starts up again and people want to see these live events remotely that used to be just like I said you know kind of like I would just throw yeah. my iPhone and try to record it that way no that that that's that's an exciting thought no I hadn't quite thought about it that way um, I know that even way back before COVID was a thing, Nick and I would discuss having crews out to, you know, the day when a crew could go out to, to all these different founders lives and, and, uh, and shoot the events um, and, and, uh, and certainly stream them to a, to a higher quality. There was what, a gentleman here in Portland and Nick, I know you know who he is from QLab, who, yeah. had, who had thoughts around taking, um, you know, cameras, you know, couple angles and what people are shooting and having all these feeds come into um, a, sort of a server that would then using AI essentially splice up and edit. <laughs> I mean, it's incredible. And then stream that as a um, live sort of video of the event. I mean, that to me is the next level. That to me is where that, where events could go in terms of streaming as opposed to, yeah, one person holding the camera and it shakes and then you got to get closer for the QR code and stuff like that. Yeah. So, so this is um, a great opportunity to uh, we're gonna we're gonna pivot a little bit and shift. Um, you know, I mentioned Josh is our city leader in Portland. He has quite a bit of experience running our events uh, in 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 person and now virtual. And you know, if you haven't seen one of our city uh, pitch competitions and city level events that highlight the startups, um, keep your eye out. And, and they're great. And what we've transitioned to is uh, we use Streamyard. And you know the presenters are all in their own spaces, and and they're on their camera, and and they slide share to basically flip through their slides, and you know it works out really really well. I will tell you, Josh, that um, I have this story, and I'm going to share it just because I have a, we have a few minutes. Um, this was when I was in Portland. I'm not even sure if I told you this, but when I was in Portland in February, around the time that we filmed that you know uh, the the video. Um, I was out, I was going to meet a friend and I was out in Portland. I had an hour or so, uh, I was downtown and I had an hour to then end up meeting my friend. And so I went into this bar and just sat down and had a beer. And I, I was like, oh, San Francisco is having their Founders Live event right now. It's like, it's so fun when I have those nights where I'm like, oh shoot, like there's an event going right now. And this was February, and so it was an in-person event, and they had the video set up and, and all that, um, or basically they had the device in, you know, recording. We were using Introvoke, which is the platform that we were using, live streaming our physical events. And I can tell you honestly, I sat there, and I was incredibly disappointed. Um, being the founder and the CEO and the brand, I was very disappointed in that user experience it was hard to hear it was actually hard to see um you, you couldn't see the slides um i was i was sitting here critiquing this has to get better if we're gonna reach a global scale and and have this brand be what it could be oh and then COVID hit and and you remember when i was like i was skeptical of online you know events and and now what we have seen I, I love, I, I really do enjoy the end product that people can view. So we've gone from in person where people watching online were like, this is horrible to people watching online and saying, oh my gosh, this is like really cool. And so what happens when the in-person events come back, there's going to be a hybrid. 
and and I'm excited for that. That what you described earlier, um, I think there's going to be some new software, uh, but basically the hybrid needs to be. I should be able to watch Founders Live New York from anywhere or Founders Live Portland from anywhere and have an almost equivalent viewing experience that we have now in our virtual events. But yet there's 100, 200 people in your room experiencing that live. And really what the I think solution is, is the way that the, the system we use, where the cameras are set up and how software can mesh that together in real time. And there's probably a digital dashboard like an iPad and someone's literally just like being able to mix almost like a DJ. Yeah. yeah that yeah. experience. And I think we're going to get there. And I'm really excited about that because we can still have founders live in person, but the light, like the watching it online has to remain the quality that it is yeah. today. Yeah, you, you, you'd have to tap into, I mean, certainly there's streaming technology that exists for events and someone manning the cameras. Uh, it, it would be a matter of finding the right solution. But I think the point here, and you're right, is, uh, and, and Nicholas as well, that, that the world has changed. And with these changes, we're now having new requirements for how we handle events and things moving forward. This whole online thing is changing our mindsets. And so uh, that's a positive, you know, coming yeah. out of all this. I think it, it's going to help unify the, the brand and how events are perceived from the outside all over the world. Um, before we, you know, we're, we're kind of getting to the end of the hour. Uh, I did want to swing back. Uh, I had another question and I'll, I'll just, I, I'll paraphrase it. Um, you know, she asked, um, in terms of intro videos, like, is there a optimal time limit um, you know, you don't have to exactly quote the Founders Live intro video, but, you know, we ended up around two minutes. So when you, when you, when a, when a company is looking at creating these sort of videos, what, maybe a better question is, is there like segments of time limits based on the goals of the video that you would want to look at if you're creating these videos as an early stage team? Yeah, I, that's a good question. You can, you can certainly look up stats on this. There's probably a lot out there. Um, you know, you could, you could use yourself uh, uh, as your own example of, of how this works for you. Like when you're watching a video, I think if you didn't grab me in the first 20 to 30 seconds and you told me the essence of what you have to say, um, that's your chance, really. I'll, I'll stick around if it's compelling enough. And even then at around two two to two and a half minutes, I'm check, I'm, I, I've had enough, typically, right? I mean, it's a, how much more time can, can you spend, especially these days, people are moving on to the next thing. So I would say, hit them in the first 30, uh, tell your entire story within the first minute in some shape or form, any other details you might wanna include, and then spend that extra minute, minute and a half if you're going to, uh, elaborating on some of the details, you know, delve in a little more. Just know that the more time that passes, the less audience and, and the less important the message should be. However, at the end of your video, close it up, you know, you know, tie it up really nicely. So those who are sticking around get the complete arc. Um, anything beyond two and a half, three minutes, um, you better be telling a, just an amazing story or there's stuff you really need to tell to those who stick around. I mean, really, so to answer the question, Two is the golden max limit these days for a story that's trying to get someone's interest so that they'll talk to you. And then uh, we've been looking a lot at 30 second and one minute versions for mm -hmm. people that they can throw on social media. And then if people are interested, they can click through and do, you know, you take them on a path. But that's typically the, the case these days, 31 yeah. minute and two minute. And you wonder why we have 99 second pitches. You yeah. know? <laughs> you're, you're way ahead of your time. Way ahead of the game, man. I hear five minute pitches and I'm like, what? I mean, it's like, that's a lifetime, you know? That is 99 seconds. Uh, yes. So what Josh is, yeah, it's like a minute and a half to two minutes. I think that that just feels that, that you have enough time to encapture what the vision is and, and tell a story, and especially video. Jeez, you know, a 99 second pitch at a Founders Live event is, uh, you know, there's dynamics there and they're, they're live and they're talking and they're pitching, but to, to, to do a video, two minutes is a long time actually. 
So um, it's just a matter of how you piece it together and, and how you do that. Yeah. What I would advise is when you, whenever, whatever video you do, script it out. Scripting really helps you see the story that you're trying to tell, some of the things you want to cover. And then as you're scripting it, think how your two minute video could shrink down to shorter versions. Do all this thinking ahead of time so that later you don't find yourself, you know, stuck with two minutes of material. You're not sure what to do with it. Um, if your goal is to have shorter versions, think, think ahead about those. Yeah. Um, well, you know, we, we only have a uh, well, few minutes left, eight minutes. Um, I want to definitely open it up, make sure that if you have a question for Josh, you have a thought, uh, feel free to, um, take yourself off mute. And if you want to just jump in, you know, maybe push it into the chat if you, if you would like as well, but, uh, we do want to make sure that there is opportunity to, you know, get, get any questions answered or thoughts. Um, maybe Josh during this time, uh, throw your LinkedIn. Uh, at least your connection so we can make sure that people can yeah. and follow I'll, up with you. I'll, I'll offer this to the, to the group here today. If uh, anybody has a video that, that you, you're working on or you finished and you'd like to get an opinion, happy to give it to you. Send it my way. Uh, I'll give you my thoughts on what I think, what I think could be improvements. So I'll put, um, for starters, here's, my, here's our website. You can contact me, contact me. Can't speak and type at the same time here. And then uh, should I do the LinkedIn? Is that, would that be a good idea? Yeah, why, not? why not? That'll, that'll be good to you. All right. Um, and any other follow-up questions that people might want to send me? Any of you guys feel free. You know, I think, you know, we, we didn't necessarily touch on um, a, a budget, but in your mind, and, and you know, I know it's slightly, it's a slightly different world now in the sense that, you know, not necessarily having a, a, a crew come on site and all that. Um, so I think your the first answer I'm looking for is in general, when it's normal life in the sense of you, you know, basically what Founders Live did, what is an appropriate budget if they want to have a quality one and a half to two minute video and if they're going to work with a company like Zenergy, you know, Zenergy, and just just so that you know, companies and founders can get an understanding that this is a worthwhile investment, and I will tell you that from day one, you know, yeah, like coming out. So, what sort of dollar amounts would we be looking at? You know, that that is um, such a hard question to answer. I mean, we we've talked about this before. Yeah, um, it so much depends on what you're trying to do. Are we trying to, you know, um, work with you to research materials and pull stuff together, help you with the script? Um, are we involved? Uh, let's assume no shooting for the time being, right? Yeah. Uh, we're not shooting anything, but we're advising. Um, and then we're doing all the post and we're finding the music and we're animating your logo. Maybe we're animating your logo, animating text. I, I honestly don't know because that's a menu right there. That's a, that each thing. But I would say, um, if you're serious about a, a, let's talk like a minimum, okay? If you're trying to pull elements, work with a professional, they're gonna help you through the process of, again, scripting, gathering materials, editing. Editing is a big piece. People discount how much time it takes. Be ready to be in the, in the two to three K range with a professional or a team. I mean, if you come in saying, I want the Founders Live video and I've got 500 bucks, there's not much of a conversation there. You know, you'd have to come in, like I said earlier, with a bunch of stuff ready to go and say to an editor, I have 500 bucks. And they might tell you, well, okay, we could do a 30 second to 45 second piece for you. You know, I mean, be ready for those kind of answers because like anything that anybody here does, you have your expertise, you charge for it. It's gonna take a certain amount of minimum money to hire a professional on Upwork or on anywhere. Uh, that, that where they would say, yes, I can do justice to the piece for the budget that, that you're offering. So I, that, I'm sketching things out here very broadly because I don't, I never like to give numbers because people get attached to those. Yeah, 2,000 totally. can mean one thing, 3,000 another. It, it's, it, but I'm saying have a mindset that it's not going to be a, just, just 200 bucks. That yeah. won't, go to Fiverr, I mean, and find somebody there if you need the sort of cheaper packages. That's what I would say, you know? Yeah. 
And, and, you know, look, everyone, this is um, for certain, it's not like setting it up for like, you know, you know, hey, Josh, like, you know, let's get everyone trying. I'm not trying to sell Josh the services or his energy. Um, but I will, will say this, that I go back to what I said earlier. Um, for Founders Live being a very young, growing company and brand, uh, especially in 2017, we weren't in many cities. By shooting that video and even the, what I said and the, what you captured and how you put it together, I think made us look a lot bigger and, and larger than we were. And, and that is what you want. I, I would suggest as you start growing your company is you want larger multinational, you know, some of the biggest companies in the world looked at Founders Live. And my guess is partly that video, they're like, we would like to work with them. Um, you know, we worked with Google for, in a, in a very strong way, you know this, Josh, um, for, for quite some time, we have a little less organized relationship partnership now, but there was, you know, that was revenue and, and, and your work from even that video, I believe hundred percent put us in a better place for even Google to say, wow, this is a, a company we want to work with. So my, my suggestion to anyone growing a startup is that you you do this early as possible and understand the investment will literally give you uh, most likely growing customers revenue and a lot a lot of road ahead yeah. um and so kaden we have a question here uh, what separates a good brand video from a great one what 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 in or little intangibles that you might be like yeah that's good but then you're like they hit it you know i could answer that and we've talked about this very much today it's the editing. I think if you, um, cause you could have a whole bunch of great material and you're using the wrong effects and, and the, the transitions, the, the, the sort of flow is choppy. Well, you've taken good ingredients and you've, you know, you've not done a good job with them. So I think a great video requires great editing. You could pull out a story um, out of bad material. We've done it. We've gotten like literally like stuff that doesn't make much sense. It looks bad. Yeah. And made good stuff out of it. So that's what, that's what makes a great video. Uh, just being able to pull it all together uh, in, in post and the better the ingredients, the better the, the end results. Mm. And so uh, last, last real quick thought is, um, you know, we, you know, you said this a little earlier, but just like in that editing, it's literally like the, the transitions are on point. It's tied to the music. Uh, so there's, there's like energetic movement, um, so maybe some slow down, speed up, you know, right. those sort of transitions, uh, you know, bumpers on the end, uh, that sort of stuff. Is that what you're talking about? Yeah, exactly. Exactly. And, and, and a good editor will sit there and polish it. I mean, they'll spend time finding the right moments with the, for yeah. the right flow. And I mean, there's a certain magic to it. Um, just want to say one quick, quick thought. I see we have like a minute. Yeah. Um, I wanted to uh, allude back to what you were saying with the founders I've experienced, how you got started. I remember having that initial conversation yeah. a few years ago where you were excited about it and you saw the value and we talked about some options and you got started on the smaller side to get going. You didn't have a lot of budget, but we worked it out. And then over time you, you saw the value more and more in the results and you were able to allocate more funds to conversations, yeah. videos to, I think the latest was, was an even bigger production as far as the marketing video goes and we did a shorter version so um i would say to to folks here let that be a process where you might start with a small budget and do the best you can but once you see the value and it's you see the proof then that will motivate you to keep going and you'll see how uh you, you'll find ways to uh to propel that forward yeah you're absolutely right um well, hey everyone, uh, we are out of time today. Uh, we wanna thank Josh so much, Josh Berenstein and Zenergy Films. Uh, he's put into the chat to, um, to check him out and, and you know, go to their website and whatnot. But uh, thank you for your expertise and also your leadership in, in Portland. Um, love it and I love all the work that you do. Thank you so much, appreciate it. All right. Thanks for the kind words and this uh, for this opportunity. Yep, yep. And thank you, everyone. This was awesome. Uh, glad to see everyone here today. Uh, thanks for participation and just hanging out as well. 
So we do these almost every week. So keep your eye out. And uh, we have another one. Before you all go, uh, I'm going to share this real quick. Um, let's see. Hold on. Uh, our next event. Uh, I'm just throwing a link on here. This is a conversation with uh, Julie Fom, and we're we're actually going to touch on exploring race-related as assumptions as leaders. That will be a very important one. Uh, please check it out if you're able to next week at the same time. And and with that, uh, we will uh, close up for today. Uh, thank you all, and uh, see you later.